Welcome back. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday mornings, WFHG 92.9. Thanks for tuning in today. I have a special guest, L. Hari, with us. Good morning, L. Hey, Christy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Just to give you a little background, L, we've been having a lot of fun this morning. We started about 9 o'clock. We interviewed Ian Justice, and he is Southwest Virginia's youngest published author and publisher, right? Yes, yes. And he has a little love interest (laughs) that was texting during the show. Her name is Ella. How fun is that? So we tried to get him to (laughs) <laughs> we tried to get him to stay so that he could get your expert advice. But we've had a lot of fun this morning. And it seems like during the holiday season, there is even more emphasis on love, either evaluating the relationship that we currently have, or maybe this longing or a sadness about not having something that we think that we need. So I'm really thankful that you're here today. I want you to talk to us about your background, what you do, the difference maybe in soulmates. I know that there's been some conversation about twin flames in certain communities. So give us a little background, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so I am a Twin Flame um, teacher, basically. I'm a facilitator. <laughs> um, and I, I help people who are going through Twin Flame journeys. Um, now, what that is, we, um, the Twin Flame is, I mean, everyone wants to put this whole romantic notion onto it. Um, and in a way, it is romantic. I mean, it's true, unconditional love. But everyone has and is a twin flame. It's the way we're created. So um, we live in a world, in the 3D physical world of duality, which means it's a world of opposites. So there's up and down, hot and cold, light and dark, you know, good and bad, um, in and out. (laughs) Everything tends to have an opposite. And in order for our souls, when we incarnate here to to be in this in the three D world of of polarities and opposites, our soul has to assimilate to that world, and it makes a polarity and an opposite of itself. And one of those polarities is in your body, and the other polarity of your same soul is in the physical body of your twin flame while you're here on Earth. And so that's what a twin flame is. Everyone has one. Everyone only has one. It's um, the twin flame is the only um, only person, living thing, anything in the cosmos that shares your exact same soul frequency. Um, Contrasting that to a soulmate, uh, we all have many, many soulmates throughout our lives. Um, They can come in for an instant or last for a lifetime. They can be parents, siblings, friends, lovers, um, even pets and animals. Um, And they basically come in uh, just, you know, either to help us through times that we need help or to teach us lessons or, you know, even just as, you know, friends through our whole lives. And so that's really the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame. There's only one twin flame and there's many soulmates. And soulmates are not your same soul. The twin flame is your exact same soul. Okay, Elle, if we have listeners who haven't really heard this term before, where did you get your information? I know there's, it seems like in the last few years, been an influx of all sorts of information. I know you've written books and you have um, a program called The Process that really debunks a lot of these myths. Why do you think there's so much out there right now? And it seems like a lot more people are becoming familiar with this concept. Right. Okay. So it is. You're right. Um, there's there's more and more people every day are experiencing um, a twin flame journey. Um, the reason that is is because, um, well, the, there are two um, kind of like galactic <laughs> openings and pathways um, that that occurred uh, recently. The first one was on um, 11-11-11. It was November 11th, 2011, and that was like the beginning of what are called the first waivers of twin flames, meaning the, the first like large group of people who have experienced a twin flame um, journey, um, experienced those journeys. Then the next one, almost, you know, just a little bit over a year later, was on 12-12-12, December 12th, 2012. And that is when the Mayan calendar actually just came to an abrupt end, and they thought the world was going to end. And um, really what it was was the world did end as we know it in terms of the human consciousness. On that day, the entirety of human consciousness on the planet um, 
has begun to increase and rise. So um, with that rising in consciousness and since then, more and more people have been um, experiencing um, the twin flame journey. And why it didn't happen um, that much to much many people, generations past or anything, was just because um, the human consciousness, the level consciousness, um, wasn't wasn't there at the right at the right place at the time. You know those times. So the whole human consciousness is rising um, constantly, <laughs> and so uh, that's why more people are experiencing twin flame journeys right now. L. I was um, talking to a couple people before the show that I know have come to me and they've had questions and we we talk about all sorts of different things here on the show. You never know what you're going to get when you when you tune in on a Saturday. It's kind of hopefully inspiring and educational and gets people thinking outside of the box. And so this lady said to me actually yesterday, she said, I've got a question for Elle. How do you know if you've met your twin flame? Like what are some of the things that that would clue you in on that you've actually met them in the physical here in the 3D? Okay, so chances are everyone has crossed paths with their twin flame. Um, in every lifetime, you've crossed paths with your twin flame. Um, the thing is why more people now are going through this twin flame journey and is because they're, getting, they're having what's called soul recognition. And um, so that means that's what happens in the instant when your soul recognizes itself in your twin flame's physical form, up until these, you know, this this new um, influx of the <laughs> twin flame um, journeys that have been happening since, you know, those dates I explained to you, um, there wasn't most most people were not having experiencing soul recognition, um, but now more and more people experience what's called soul recognition, and um, so when that happens, when your soul recognizes itself in your twin flame physical body. Um, this all happens on a very deep subconscious level. Um, consciously, you might not even recognize it uh, that it's happening. But um, what that does is it activates your shared um, polarized uh, twin flame soul energy that you share with your twin flame. And those polar- polarities build up and build up. And as they're building up, um, it, it feels euphoric. And you feel like um, it manifests physically as you feeling like you've met, like, you know, You've never, you've never felt such love with someone before. That you've, you've known this person forever. You feel like home. Um, it's you know the best sex ever. <laughs> it's just you know it, it just feels like the best experience ever, and you're just in heaven. But then once those polarities reach a certain, build up to a certain point, um, it's like a tipping point, and then like the opposite ends of a magnet, they they repel each other. And they make it physically impossible for you and your twin flame to be together anymore. And many times that manifests as um, one of the twin flames just suddenly disappearing or leaving or, you know, fighting occurring in, in the physical world, which no one has any idea why it's going on. Or why suddenly you went from this ecstasy to, you know, not being able to even, you know, deal with each other. And um, when that happens, it's, it feels like your soul almost is literally being ripped from your body. And you go through this intense um, pain. You can feel it in, in your gut. You can feel it. Um, it's more than just heartbreak that you've ever experienced. It's, it's, it really can be debilitating. Everyone's level of pain is, is different. Everyone's journey is unique and individual. So how things manifest physically in the physical world with this varies so much. But, um, but uh, behind the scenes, on the full level, is that's exactly what's going on. The polarities are uh, built up so much that they form this um, energetic wall, so to speak, um, between you and the twin flame, making it impossible physically for you to be together, even though both twin flames want and desire to be together because the soul desires itself. And so that's the catalyst. That's how most people get the wake-up call that, um, you know, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, you know, what's going on? What's, why am I feeling so crazy? I've never felt like this before. You know, why can't I function? Or, um, you know, what went wrong? Am I crazy? I can't get over this person. And so that's what um, is the catalyst for most people that, you know, begin their twin flame journeys because um, they, they go looking for these answers and, you know, their soul leads them, you know, to figure out that, oh, I'm on a twin flame journey. And so it's really the pain that, that is necessary to, to, you know, catapult them onto their journey. Elle, we need to take a quick commercial break. Can you stay with us for a few minutes? Sure, I'd love to. Thanks. Okay, we'll be back here in just a moment. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday mornings, WFHD 92.9. 
Welcome back. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday Mornings, WFHG. We're back with my special guest, Elle Hari. She is an author. She's the creator of The Process, and she is a Twin Flames facilitator. We've been talking about love this morning. Elle was explaining the difference of soulmates and Twin Flames. Elle, I think one of the things uh, that you had mentioned before, you were talking about the pain that's associated. So it could be that maybe somebody had the soul recognition of somebody that that just it was different than any other experience or relationship and then they resurface 10 or 15 years later or maybe they've never really even though their life has moved on they haven't gotten over that person does that sometimes occur yes yes everyone's journey is unique and individual so yeah there's been people who have grown up right next door been born on the same day in the same hospital grown up next door to each other who are twin flames their whole lives i mean they are twin flames their whole lives they didn't realize it they, you know, move away, get married to other people. Um, they meet up later in life and that's full recognition and realize they're twin flames. People who dated in high school or college um, had full recognition, broke up, have been devastated for all this time, and then finally realize, oh, my goodness, why am I still, you know, can't get over this person. I mean, it, it's everyone's journey is unique and individual. I do want to say, though, if, if that's okay, there are some, there's very common certain um very common traits that kind of um, are seen again and again in, in, their, in Twin Flame um, experiences. Um, and they usually involve physical obstacles that would tend to make it, um, you know, make or break any other type of, of relating experience with people. So, for example, um, there could be like a very large age difference between the Twin Flame or there could be, um, they could live on um, complete opposite ends of the earth and um, just, like, get full recognition through um, chatting online, which is is, is really interesting. Um, They could be, uh, you know, different religions, different races, where um, they ordinarily wouldn't, you know, be, you know, look for that, or that wouldn't be accepted in their families. Um, They would be, uh, you know, some of them can even be um, the same sex, when either have been... um, homosexual before so uh it, there, there's always a usually some kind of physical um you know obstacle that really isn't an obstacle and that's kind of the point of the twin flame journey this is all happening on a soul level so really um you know the, the physical level <laughs> doesn't <laughs> is irrelevant but um you know there is usually some some very common traits that many of them have in common Okay, Elle, let's say we have a listener and they really haven't been able to explain some of the things that they've been going through. They don't even know the word twin flame, but they're saying, okay, this this is something that, that I recognize. This seems familiar to me. Once that occurs, what do you do after that point? Or if you're sure, it's like, okay, yeah, what, what Elle said, I, I know that that has happened in my life. Where do we go from there? I know there's a lot of information online. People are giving advice like, like we love to do and talk about certain things. Where does somebody go and, and what's the next step in the process of that? Sure. So, um, yeah, I just want to caution that about 99.9% of the information out there is either misinformation complete myths, or um, it's taken completely out of context of, um, you know, for the Twin Flame, um, the whole entire, (laughs) you know, um, thing about the concept of Twin Flames. Um, So I have a book that I wrote. Um, It's actually more like a booklet. (laughs) It's not that long. Um, It's called Twin Flames Exposed, where I go through and dispel the common myths, and in doing so, um, provide clarity for what the Twin Flame journey really is. really is about and what's really going on um, and to help people. And um, for actually for your listeners today, if they'd be interested, um, they can go to my website, um, bewithyourtwinflame.com, and there's um, a, a contact form right on the homepage of my website. If they put their email address in there and say, I heard you on the radio today, um, I can send them, uh, I'd be happy to send them a free download link to this book, Twin Flames Exposed, just so they could... Um, you know, learn more about it, even even if they're not going through it, and and it'll help provide clarity. And I would also like to point out that um, you don't have to have already had full recognition of your twin flame to begin your journey. Um, chances are, people are listening to this now. It's because um, their soul led them to this, and your soul might be ready to do this, even if it has if you had yet to have what what you know of as soul recognition. So um, 
Um, it's just a matter of working with your own full energy. This is this twin flame journey really is about it's your own spiritual journey. Um, it's a journey of your soul. So um, it's not even really about the physical form uh, or personality of your twin flame. Yes, your twin flame ends up coming along for the ride, but um, this is your personal um, soul journey. It's your it's your spiritual awakening, and um, it's all about getting to know and understand and love yourself on the deepest soul level. And as you do that, you'll um, figure out, uh, you'll become aware of, like, your true soul's purpose. You'll become aware of your true passions. People, situations, opportunities will be magnetized into your life to help support those things. Um, your relationships with with other people in your life will will really um, improve as well. So it's it's really, it's an amazing, miraculous, beautiful journey, um, regardless if you've had soul recognition yet or not. Oh, I haven't asked you if this was okay, but we may have listeners that say, okay, she's an author. She's done the program. She's created the program, the process. She seems like she knows what she's talking about, but how did you get to that point? This is something that's really personal to you as well, right? Oh, yes, yes. So um, four years ago, excuse me, I met, um, you know, I had full recognition of my twin flame. Um, I had just gotten over divorce. I was a single mom of two young boys, um, five and two, and I, I met this guy, and he was 16 and a half years younger than me, and, you know, I just thought it'd be, like, you know, have some fun for a little bit. Um, we hung out for, like, years together for six weeks, and then suddenly, you know, it all, like, just imploded. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, yeah, for some reason, I was just, it felt like my soul had been sucked from my body. I couldn't get up off the floor. I couldn't function for six months. Within those six months, I mean, it was, I've, like I said, I've been gone through a really contentious divorce. I uh, had many relationships in my life. I've, you know, been broken up with before, and I had never experienced anything like this. And it only lasted for six weeks, and I was just, you know, beside myself. I didn't know what was going on, why I was feeling or acting so crazy, why I couldn't function. I wanted to just die. Um, In those six months, um, I had worked with 13 other um, you know, spiritual advisors, psychics, Lulu Mambo. Um, I went to my own um, counselor, my therapist. Um, I, I've tried every route I could think of to, you know, either get over him, get him back, <laughs> um, and just, you know, figure out why I was so crazy. Um, and then um, six months after that, um, I, oh, my soul led me to um, my beautiful, amazing teacher who was able to... Um, Help me uh, within a week feel better, um, and within three months after that, uh, magnetize my twin flame back into my life. And um, I continued to work with her for two years after that, even because I'm um, like I said, this is a journey about your soul. It's not just about getting with the twin flame. Um, it doesn't end ever. It's it's a lifelong journey. It's eternal because your soul is eternal. Um, so I just continued to work with her for two years. I just loved it, and I just felt you know. I don't know, I just fell in love with the whole the whole journey. It's miraculous, it's beautiful, it's magical. And so um, uh, she passed away about a year and a half ago, and um, but she had discovered these teachings. Um, she was very gifted. She channeled the archangels. Um, she had uh, worked with Burning Virtue, who's um, a really big name in angel communications. And um, she just had a gift that I don't have that gift, but she had it. And somehow she was given this information for these teachings on Twin Flames. And so she was the only one in the world who had those teachings. And I had worked with her long ago. She had passed away, and um, her family had removed her any access to her teachings from online. And then so I didn't, I didn't want her mission and her legacy and to end with like that, and just to end it all. And I also didn't want the world to be deprived of of this help. I mean, for the people, she saved my life. She literally saved my life. I couldn't get up off the floor for six months. And, you know, I wanted to, if there's anyone else out there feeling like, like I was, I wanted to make sure that they could get that help as well. Oh, so that's how I, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And 
it's it's such a gift that you're going to be able that you're giving this uh, book to our listeners. If people are curious at all about this, just send you a message, like you said, say you heard it on the radio, and you can get this and and um, discover maybe a whole new world or something that your soul has known all along and was just waiting for the right timing, divine timing and information. So you've got some Facebook pages, lots of contact information. Before I let you go, Elle, would you give that to our listeners? Yeah, sure. So again, my website, if, if you, you want to contact me, read my blog, um, um, see how, how I can support you, and also send a message um, that, you list, that you heard this radio show, and I will send you a free copy of Twin Flames Exposed. Um, that is uh, www.bewithyourtwinflame.com, um, and I have um, a pretty big Facebook group, pretty active one. Um, it's called Just Be With Your Twin Flame on Facebook. Um, I also, uh, uh, for people that, um, uh, you know, per- are working in the process, which is um, these sacred teachings, my interpretation of these sacred teachings that I learned from my teacher, I call them the collectively the process. So people that are, are working in that, there is um, a process members club on Facebook as well. Um, and that's like a group. And, you know, uh, people will be added to that when they do get the process teaching. So... Yeah, that's. I also have business pages, the process page, and El Hari page, and um, Simply Exposed page. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of have a pretty big presence on Facebook. I have a, a little mini YouTube YouTube channel, and um, I have a few followers on Twitter and like two on Instagram. <laughs> so <laughs> Facebook is the main place to find me. I would say you're you're very active, and I'd love to have you back on the show anytime. I know more and more people are becoming aware of this. As you said, more people are having soul recognition. This is going to be a topic that I know that we're going to hear more and more about. I'd love to have you back anytime. You're so sweet and compassionate and sympathetic, and yet you're getting the message out that people need to hear. So it's it's kind of like a it's a tough love thing. Because when you find, I'm sure if you find yourself in that situation, you really need somebody to say, okay, this this is truth. This is where what you need to do to move forward, which is important. Yeah, sugarcoating doesn't help anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about truth. It's all about truth. And sometimes the truth is not what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear, for sure. And thank you for letting me um, be on here and, and spread, spread the, the message. I really appreciate it. This was so much fun, and I'd love to be on again anytime. Thank you so much. And I think you're in Florida, right? Mm-hmm. Are you in Florida? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. You're, oh, like. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, anytime you come out to Virginia, <laughs> well, you can come to the studio. <laughs> or maybe we could just come and do a short show in Florida. Is that good with you, Ricky? Yeah. <laughs> He's saying yes. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful weekend, we Elle. The there you go. It sounds okay, great. Thanks. Thank you.